welcome. We are very excited to see you all here tonight. Um, this tonight is an evening for you to learn more about how the ATS program works here at Jefferson College, um, and then uh, really have an idea of what to expect over the summer communication-wise from us. So we are very excited to see you all here. We're excited for our new students, our returning students this fall. And so we are just gonna go ahead and get started. Um, quick reminder, if you have not registered yet uh, using the QR code, please make sure you scan the QR code on the paper you were handed on the way in, or type in that web address. Um, that way we can just see who joined us tonight and um, who we may need to follow up with, uh, who doesn't have this information. So, uh, my name is Sarah Perry, and I am the Recruitment and Placement Representative here. I believe I have spoken with a lot of the students at your various high schools, um, and maybe some of the parents too at various parent nights. So, it is nice to see you all again. So, you have an idea of what we are going to be covering tonight. Uh, really, again, talking a lot about uh, what the ATS is, what we offer to our students, um, some of our information regarding uh, programs, locations, policies, and then really what to expect over the summer. So first, I've talked about this, but uh, congratulations. Uh, it is a very awesome, unique opportunity, and um, we're very excited for you to be here. Programs are very competitive, and you should be proud that you earned this spot. So we actually had a record number of applications this year, and um, it is awesome that you were able to um, earn a spot here at the Area Technical School. Also, the ATS requires students to work hard to be college and career ready. So um, we put a lot of trust in our students. Your sending high schools put a lot of trust in you. And so, um, we have great expectations for you, and um, we're excited to see what you do. So I'm going to do some introductions tonight. Um, first, uh, I'd like to introduce Mrs. Suzanne Richardson. She actually is our new director who will be starting this summer with us at the Area Technical School, and I think she has a few words to say. I'd like to give everyone a wholehearted welcome to the Jefferson College Area Technical School. I come to you with 24 years of experience at traditional high schools. I've been a teacher, a coach, a counselor, and an administrator, and I'm so excited to start this new journey of working with career and technical education. Your children have such a great opportunity to come to Jefferson College to learn occupational specific skills in each of our programs. What's great about the ATS is that your kid has a chance to earn high school credit while they're preparing for their future success, for their future career. They're gonna have a unique opportunity to work with our staff um, and folks in their career specific field. So we're really excited um, to offer these programs to our 11 sending schools and for your children to be here with us. So welcome to the family, and I'm excited to join you this year. Thank you, Suzanne. All right, so I am also going to introduce some other members of our team, and then if they just want to stand and wave so you can start familiarizing yourself with them. So we have uh, Mrs. Kalina Critchlow. She is one of our special services representatives. This is Peggy Montgomery. She is also one of our special services representatives. Um, Ms. Erica Chandler, she is not in attendance tonight, but she is one of our senior administrative assistants. We also have Ms. Ashley Knoll. She is our accountability clerk. And we have Ms. Cheryl Sadanka. She is our ATS contract tracer. So uh, you're probably thinking, well, what is it? 
and we're going to watch this video to learn some more information. Everyone wants kids to be ready to take on the real world, right? So what's the secret? Say hello to CTE. CTE is career technical education. Maybe you've never heard of it, but CTE gives learners an academic foundation along with technical skills and hands-on experience in a whole bunch of different areas to help them get ready for the real world. Think of CTE as a high school experience, but with even more value because it fills a big gap for a lot of students. In fact, CTE learners and their parents are three times as likely to say they're very satisfied with the ability to learn real-world skills as part of their education as compared to non-CTE learners and their parents. And since over 75% of CTE learners enroll in post-secondary education after high school, CTE is definitely creating a path to college and career success. And get this, they have a graduation rate over 10% higher than non-CTE students. Did you know 89% of parents think students should receive more education about career choices while in high school? That's where CTE comes in. Think about it. Is it better to experiment with career choices when you're paying money to do so in college? Or should it happen in high school so students know a lot earlier whether a career option is the right fit? The answer is fairly obvious, don't you think? Now let's talk about why CTE is good for business and industry. It's pretty simple. Companies want skilled employees, and they're having a hard time finding them, which can cost a company money in lost productivity. Enter CTE. Six of the 10 hardest to fill positions are in technical fields or require a CTE background. In fact, about half of all CTE learners are enrolled in programs in leading fields such as healthcare, STEM, and information technology, matching employer needs with student passions. CTE programs directly connect learners in high school and post-secondary with employers through internships, apprenticeships, and other meaningful on-the-job experiences. When it comes to CTE, more than twice as many CTE parents report being satisfied with internship opportunities. That means a lot of doors are being opened for kids. So here's the bottom line. Parents want their kids to find a career they can be passionate about. Kids want the same thing. And when you think about the real world, what could be better than having learners enter a field they know is right for them with a ton of hands-on experience? It's all possible thanks to CTE. CTE, learning that works for America. To learn more, visit careertech.org. All right, so at the ATS, we offer that career technical education. We offer those important skills that help students become successful in life. So those technical skills, those academic skills, and those employability school skills um, to really help students be successful when they leave us. So they can apply what they are learning um, in the real world. So that's really the importance of what we are doing here. So some additional benefits of attending the ATS. Um, industry networking and job placement. So our faculty are very well connected. A lot of them do come from industry, and so they have that prior experience. They have those contacts. Um, we bring in employers sometimes to uh, help you network and meet with those individuals to find out what that career would be like. So you have a lot of opportunities to really uh, do that networking and possibly go right into the workforce after you graduate. We also offer certifications and skills only available um, through the ATS. So we have industry recognized credentials and those are desired credentials by employers. So our students who have those uh, credentials, when they are going out looking for a job, that makes them more competitive because they have those skills that says they've been a part of a program and they've received that training. Um, many of our programs offer college credit that is concurrent with high school credit. So you are starting that college transcript um, and then uh, you are also getting credit for these programs back at your high school. So you don't have to delay your graduation or anything like that. Um, you are really coming here to extend your learning experience. It's an opportunity to try something new that is specific to your career interests. So uh, you may not have the opportunity to take a class um, in the program that you were entering in at the ATS back at your high school. Uh, we have that opportunity here, uh, here on our campus, and uh, it really provides a good chance to learn and extend your uh, 
education. And we have students from 11 high schools in Jefferson County um, who come to the ATS. So we have 11 sending schools. So you can network with students who are um, interested in the same area and occupation that you are. So it's a great opportunity to do that as well. So I want to turn it over now to um, our special services representatives to talk about some information regarding the IEP and 504 process. So Mrs. Montgomery and I are both uh, retired school counselors and retired teachers as well, so we're very excited to be here. We are liaisons um, for all of our sending schools, and one of the things that we help with are helping our students who have IEPs or 504s to be able to get set up with their accommodations for the classes that we have out here at the ATS. So if you are in a high school class, you don't need to worry about it. We, we get those accommodations and we'll have them ready to roll, okay? Our high school classes include biomed, or biomedical science, uh, building repair technology, residential carpentry, advanced carpentry, health services one only, and metal fab. All of those classes are considered high school classes. We gotcha. The IEP 504 transfers over very smoothly. If you're in a dual credit class, which means you're starting your college transcript, you're treated like a college student. And so there is an extra step that the, the college requires if you're in a dual credit and you're, you have an IEP or a 504. If you have an IEP or 504, we really want to encourage you this summer to fill out the disability service um, support service application. And that's not it. <laughs> Uh, but if you get that application filled out this summer, and they, they will have some information that they'll want you to get to them, and there is a, a web link where you can get even more information about the ladies that are over there, we'll get you set up um, so that your accommodations are ready for that first day of school. We will be over here after this presentation, so if you have a specific question, we have a handout so that you can have names of the people that are in the office, and we'll get you set up. So, Mrs. Montgomery, Mrs. Critchlow, Peggy Montgomery, Galena Critchlow, we're here to help you. Thank you so much for coming. All right, so uh, because of our unique situation and being located on a community college campus, um, we have the opportunity to utilize various lab and classroom spaces here. And so our programs are uh, located primarily in two buildings on campus. And so first, you'll see in the first column, uh, we have the Area Technical School building. Um, so the programs there are early childhood, and you'll see after each program it says dual or high school, and that's what Mrs. Critchlow was talking about earlier with, is it a high school level program or is it a dual credit program? Um, so we have early childhood education, culinary arts, digital media technology, building repair technology, residential carpentry, advanced residential carpentry, metal fabrication, and then our applied mathematics and applied communication classes are located in that building as well. Um, in the career and technical education building, so CTE, we have Health Services 1, Health Services 2, Health Information Technology, Biomedical Sciences, uh, welding technology, heating, refrigeration, and AC technology, fire science technology, automotive technology, and precision machining technology. So they also have a lab in the technology center, so you have kind of two unique laboratory spaces that you get to use. Uh, one thing I will note, uh, for those of you who may have been around before, uh, uh, precision machining technology is a name change for the fall for our computer integrated manufacturing program. So um, it just recently, they changed the name of it. Uh, so that is what that program is. And then there's a map. This actually will be included in your summer mailer this summer. Um, so you don't need to worry about squinting and see what it says right now. But um, it will have the information about where each of the programs are, and then some additional information about our welcome night, which I will talk about shortly. Okay, so let's get into some of the nuts and bolts here. So transportation. 
Students will take several courses after high school. So uh, many of you should have already been in contact with your uh, counselors, and they have built the ATS into your high school schedule. So you'll take some classes at your high school, and then um, you'll take your occupational specific skill training. So the program that you're enrolled in, you'll take those classes here at Jefferson College. Um, students will ride the sending schools bus to and from Jefferson College, so you don't need to worry about getting a ride out here. The, each sending school does send a school bus here and back. <coughs> and then each school has specific details for scheduling dismissal, driving policies, et cetera. So reach out to your school counselor if you don't know this information at this time. I know many of them are scheduling uh, ATS orientations. Um, I think Herculaneum have one next week. Uh, Hillsborough's done one. So uh, that is a really good meeting to also attend because you'll get more specific information about how your sending school uh, manages the ATS schedule and transportation. Summer mailers. So over the summer, probably towards the middle to end of June, you will be receiving a packet from Jefferson College. And it will have some information that's going to be very important to prepare for the fall. So first, you will have a welcome letter from your instructor. And so they will give you some more information about the program you're enrolled in and uh, a tool or supply list. So uh, many of our supply requirements and uniform requirements can be purchased at the bookstore on campus. If it's something a little more uh, specialty, uh, they have some different vendors listed in that letter. So be looking for that tool and supply list in your summer mailing. Um, Mrs. Critchlow and Mrs. Montgomery are also going to include some information about DSS and uh, special education services. So if you have an IEP or a 504 plan and you need to figure out how that transfers over to the ATS, they will have information in there. Um, welcome night information. So on August 18th, so three months away, I think. <laughs> uh, we will be doing a welcome night event where we will actually have the ATS and the CTE building open for you to meet your instructors, see the classroom, the facilities, and really just get a feel for what uh, the ATS will look like for you. So I encourage you to attend that night. Uh, again, that is August 18th, it's a Thursday from 4 to 7 p.m. And there will be more information in your summer mailer regarding that. We will also have our 22-23 academic calendar. We're finalizing a few items on that at the moment. So we will have that out to you um, with our summer mailer. And we will also post a copy on our website too if you need additional copies. And any additional program paperwork, so medical forms or things like that, we will include in your summer mailer. One thing I want to note is that if you have moved since you applied in January or February, um, we may not have the most updated mailing address on file for you, so if you need to change your mailing address with us, please see um, me or uh, Mrs. Sadanka before you leave tonight so we can make sure we have the best mailing address on file. Some more information regarding rules, policies, and procedures. So, students will follow their sending school and ATS rules and policies. So, if you wouldn't do it at your high school, you're not going to be doing it at the ATS. So, um, we are an extension of your high school, and all of those policies still apply. Um, each student will receive the ATS student handbook at the start of the school year. Instructors will review the handbook with their students. So, you'll go over that in class and really um, learn more about specific processes, procedures, how to report the absence, etc. Um, and then there, in the back, there's a statement of ownership page. Um, that will need to be signed by the student and a parent or guardian and returned by the second week of school to your program instructor. So parents, uh, guardians, I ask you that you also review the handbook at that time so you are familiar with the policies and procedures as well. Transportation. Um, I talked a little bit about this, but again, ATS students ride the sending school bus to Jefferson College. So each sending school will send a school bus. Um, ATS students may be allowed to uh, drive on a case-by-case -case basis. So 
Um, there needs to be some type of uh, extenuating circumstance in place uh, for a driving request to be approved. So, um, you should not expect to drive to the ATS, but if you have an extenuating circumstance, uh, you'll want to begin that dialogue with your sending school and us to make sure that we get a driver's registration form on file for you. Class time, so if you are in the AM session, that is from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. You may notice on your high school schedule that they have you leaving a little bit, probably like 8.30 or 8.15, hopping on the bus, um, and then you're getting back probably along, around 11.30 or so. Um, that's because they're accounting for transportation. But you are physically on this campus in class from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Uh, PM session, very similar, 11.55 a.m. to 1.55 p.m. Um, so you have about two hours each day in which you are attending your ATF classes. These are Monday through Friday. It's a regular part of your schedule. Students are expected to attend the ATS each scheduled day. So uh, one question we get a lot is if your sending school is not in session and Jefferson College is in session, uh, which happens sometimes, uh, you will have to come to the ATS unless excused by your sending so sometimes there are extenuating circumstances, or maybe they aren't able to send a bus. Um, your counselor will notify us of that, and uh, we will work through those situations. But otherwise, um, even if your high school is closed, because sometimes you have PD days or uh, just different days off that we don't have at the college, uh, you will still be needing to come out to Jefferson College. That's why it is really important to take a peek at that calendar when it comes out in your summer mailer to make sure you're looking at any of the days that we're off um, or days that we have class but your school is off. Absences must be reported to your high school and the ATS senior administrative assistant. So that is Ms. Chandler. Um, parents or guardians, you should be calling 636-481-3450 to report your student's absence. So, uh, you know, doctor's appointments, need to leave early, anything like that, please make sure you're calling us and letting us know of that information. We also communicate that information back to the high school so we can just reconcile who was where and when, and we're all good with that. Um, absences due to sending school events must be approved by the sending school and communicated to the ATS. So we understand that some of you are very involved, you know, um, if you're a football player or cheer or band, or, um, there's a lot of different things you all are doing right now. And sometimes that requires events during the school day. And so we do work with the sending schools on those um, activities. And so your sending school will need to contact us if there's something that you need to be excused for. So please make sure you're working with your sending school on that um, and don't just not show up. <laughs> we need to have that communication. And then snow days. So the ATS will announce snow closures on social media, Viking text, and emails to sending schools. So our snow days are um, a little different. Again, we follow more of what Jefferson College does. And so uh, if Jefferson College is open, um, we likely will be open unless we decide because of the number of school closures with our high schools that will be closed. So please be making sure that you follow us on social media, you check with your high school counselor, um, and then once you have a Jeffco email address, you can opt in to our texting, um, and you'll be receiving texts as well if we are closed. So um, again, it's one of those situations where, you know, we may be open, but your school is closed. Uh, so just be looking at one of those communication sources. So, students can be dropped from the ATS due to lack of progress, excessive absenteeism, failing grades, or disciplinary issues. So, we expect you to take this seriously. We put a lot of trust in you again. A lot of you, you're going into a lab space with um, power tools, or you know, maybe you were working with children, or um, our health services. You were going out to residential care facilities. And so, we put a lot of trust in our students. 
And so uh, it's important that you're taking things seriously. Uh, if you need help, we have a lot of resources that at your disposal. I would encourage you to talk to your counselor, talk to your instructors. We are here to help you. But, um, you know, we, again, we have a lot of applications and you earned a spot. So, um, you know, it's really important that you take it seriously. Uh, and then one thing I do want to note is students may not switch programs mid-year. So I do get that this is a career exploration opportunity. And so maybe you're in a program and you're like, huh, I don't know if I want to do this, you know, for the rest of my life. That's okay. Uh, we allow students to apply to different programs uh, between academic years, so for the next year. But once you're in that uh, program, um, you need to stay in that program for the full year, and then if you want to transfer, we can look at that for another year. Okay, so I think we have a few faculty members here tonight, and uh, if they'd like to stand up and wave, and if you have any advice for our new students. I think we have Mr. Griggs here, he's with Residential Carpentry. So, and then Amanda Mackey, so, uh, she is one of our biomedical science instructors. So, uh, do you have anything you'd like to say to our, our students? Welcome, and we're excited that you're here. So many great faces for so many great programs. And uh, if anybody that's in biomed has a question that they'd like to ask specifically, I'll be happy to stay after and answer some of those questions. Awesome. of desserts so we don't have to take these. Uh, but thank you so much for coming. We're really excited for you to be here this fall. Thank you.